My name is Melissa Jane Cronfeld, and I'm going to spend a few minutes today talking about why I actually think that the future of America is going to be bigger, brighter, and better than ever. And I believe this because I'm a progressive conservative. Now I know what some of you are thinking, a progressive conservative? Isn't that an oxymoron? How can you be both a progressive and a conservative at the same time? Well then I would ask you to stop, just for a moment, and consider, what is the root of progressivism? It's progress. And progress is not the purview of any one party. Progress has not been invented, copyrighted, trademarked by the left, and no single person, politician, or political ideology owns the right to progress. Progress is meant for all people, by all people. And that includes us consumers, too. Progressivism and conservatism are not mutually exclusive. Myself and my peers embrace progressivism by developing center-right policies for the purpose of moving all of us forward. It's a new take on politics. It's a platform that's open-minded to people of all persuasions. It's transparent, it's unbiased, it's incorruptible, and it's imbued with passion for purpose. And it's beholden only to its constituents. Because if we are not progressive, we're regressive. And there is nothing progressive about myself, my platform, or my political beliefs. I'm a conservative who believes the world doesn't need to bend to my beliefs but that there's space in a changed world for my beliefs to flourish and thrive. In fact, I might say that there's been no better time for conservatism to be the flame of freedom, not fear for our future. Let me give you an example. A true progressive conservatism, conservative is a torchbearer for LGBTQ rights. The very essence of the conservative movement, the fundamental underpinnings of the Republican Party since its very inception, has always been grounded in self-reliance, personal responsibility, individualism, limited government, deregulation, and the separation of church and state. So who am I to define who you love, or on what grounds, and on what grounds can I tell you who to share your life with, who you can call your wife, your husband, your partner? Who can I tell you can lie with at night, who you can raise kids with? let alone whose hand you can hold and pass on. Certainly not me, because I'm a progressive conservative. And that's why I'm running for city council here in Manhattan. Running for city council is my opportunity to do what I love and do best. Fostering social impact and serving the needs of others by making a positive difference in the lives of as many people as I can. The chance to represent the people of New York where I was raised and lived my entire life is the best possible way that I can express my gratitude to a vibrant and thriving America, which has given us so much. I'm running for city council because I want to share an optimistic, energetic, and updated vision for government. And I want to create policies that empower our most important resources, the men, the women, the children, the seniors and millennials, the teachers and students, those of us born here and those of us who immigrate from all over the world, our business owners, entrepreneurs, innovators, our gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, questioning, and queer community members, the black, brown, white, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, atheist, and agnostic, all the people that make this city the greatest city in the world. But most importantly, I'm running for city council because I want to transform and inspire our government. And I want to get our next generation excited about engaging in the political process excited about getting involved with local officials, excited about running or supporting civil-minded campaigns open to people of all persuasions in order to energize our next great generation of leadership. Because my campaign is not all about me. It's about us and everything that we can achieve when we come together as a forward and community. And if I'm doing this now because if not now, then when? If this last electoral cycle has taught us anything, it's that we cannot allow strong men and false idols to fill us with fear of our Muslim brothers and sisters, to tell us women what we can and cannot do to our bodies, let alone what we plan to grab from it. We cannot allow laws to be built through our humanity or Cold War thugs to drag us back into the past. We cannot allow friendly fascism to flourish, and we will not permit trolls to hack our way of life with our anti-Semitic, misogynist, and racist world being thinly veiled under the guise of an alternative narrative. Because the so-called alt-right is anything but right. In fact, they are everything that is wrong about our current political discourse. When discussing the Negro Revolution the centennial of the Emancipation Proclamation, Dr. Martin Luther King wrote a book called Why We Can't Wait. 
The Reverend King tells us freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. And oppressed we are, stifled by debt and lacking economic opportunity, crushed under the weight of a glass ceiling that we can't seem to break. Lost in a sea of labels which we use to define ourselves, but only result in us dividing ourselves more. No, we can't wait. We can't wait any longer to have the government we deserve. As Dr. King reminds us, we must demand it. We can no longer wait for political reform and renewal. We must demand it. We can no longer wait for the next great generation of leadership to find the time to get off Facebook and lead us. We must demand that they do that right now. And now is the time. We must demand a return to inclusive morality, a faith in law and justice, and basic human civility. We must demand of ourselves that we return to a belief in which it is understood that we are indeed stronger together. And if we can demand this without sacrificing compromise, without forgetting that demanding to be heard also requires a demand to listen, and if we can make our demands clear without resorting to anarchy and nihilism, then righteousness shall always be on our side. And victory, as it was for the civil rights movement a half century ago, will be ours. But as Dr. King reminds us, we must demand it. And we can no longer wait. I will no longer wait. And I hope that you won't either. So thank you for opening up your minds and your hearts to my message today. Uh, God bless you all.